welcome back to John's Films, your home for DaVinci Resolve tips, tricks, and technology I think you need to know. Today we're talking about how your mirrorless cameras and even your cell phones have outpaced our computers when it comes to video editing. And we'll talk about the settings you need to set so that you don't create trouble when you sit down to edit your video. Before that, if you're not yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe. I'm on the road to 10,000 and I'd greatly appreciate your help. The first thing you should be aware of is the video codec that you're shooting in. This really comes down to how compressed is your footage. In fact, many of the modern codecs that are available were really intended as delivery codecs to be used transporting data across the web. That means they're really compressed down and they take quite a bit of power to decompress them. Fortunately, our cameras, both cell phones and mirrorless, have application-specific circuitry that does it rather efficiently. A lot of computers, however, don't. Or if they do, applications are not coded, or you don't have a license to, use those encoders, and therefore you do all of your processing in the general CPU. This makes it less efficient and can introduce stutters into your editing process. The second setting that you need to be aware of is what's called 422 chroma subsampling. It's probably only something you see on mirrorless and cinema cameras at this point. However, as it begins to make its way into cell phones and further, we need to be aware of it because if we choose that setting, we are immediately self-selecting out of the NVIDIA NVENC engine, the AMD encoder decoder, and we're forcing our CPU to do work on what is now a ton of data points, not only to manage the brightness values and the exposure, but also to manage the color. This creates a ton of complexity in processing that we'll now see on my 5950X with an RTX 3090 here in benchmarking. Here we are in a timeline I've configured first with some 420 footage, so mushrooms 420. H.265 10-bit shot at 120 frames a second. It is slowed down at 20%. Originally shot in S-Log3, you can see here ungraded, and a grade comes in so you can see it graded. The sunflower footage, this is H.265 10-bit 422. Also at 120 frames per second, slowed down at a modifier of 20%. This is where we will see the pain. To help us understand what's going on in the computer, I will bring up Task Manager. Here, I'm gonna focus first on the GPU. So remember, 420, mushrooms, 422, sunflowers. Let's click play and see what happens. Based on what we learned before, we expect that the CPU is not going to be doing much work here with our mushrooms. Instead, you notice the decoding is happening in the dedicated decoder here on the GPU. Now, as we switch to sunflowers, we can see all decoding stops, and oh boy, the CPU is fired up. It has many of its cores going often at high peaks. This is a 16 core, 32 thread processor, which can boost to over five gigahertz on individual cores. And for fun, I'm now going to show you what happens if I run 120 frames per second at its native clip speed of 100%. This can get challenging for my CPU because it has to do all of the decoding. And we can see that in the graph. Let's check it out. I click play and I come back here. You'll immediately see my CPU spiked up to 100%. It's having difficulty playing this back and it stutters even when trying to meet a 24 frames per second playback speed. The 120 frames per second cannot get through the processor fast enough and it stutters throughout playback. Thanks for watching. Now you know exactly what to avoid when setting up your camera so that you can edit more easily on your computer. If this has been helpful to you in any bit, please click like down below. It helps other people find the video and have a great day.